Church at Matriot Malden. We're glad each one of you back out with us tonight. Hope each one of you picked up a bulletin. We're not going to throw things in the bulletin. I just remember all the shut ins that's in our bulletin are sick. Also, I told us this morning Lori Schultz, she had failed and broke her leg in two places, so let's remember her. Also, Diane Faircloud, she's going to the doctor Tuesday to see about her knee, so she probably has to have surgery on it. So let's remember her also. <coughs> the personal works group meeting will be after the evening service, so anyone can stay and help with that will be greatly appreciated. And also next Sunday, our fellowship meal, so I can get that. Into our services tonight, our song leader will be Joel Foster, a lesson by Dennis Strine, closing prayer by Joel Maddox. And we'll begin our worship service with opening prayer. Would you bow with me, please? Our kind, lovely Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Lord's day that you've given unto us. We thank you for our health and our strength. We thank you for this time to come out and take part in this worship service, be with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Pray that we can lift up our voices and sing songs of praise unto you. Pray that you'll be with Brother Joel as he leads our singing tonight. That we'll <clears throat> He'll lead it in a way that we can all sing praises to you. Also, I pray that you'll be with our brother Dennis tonight, that he have very recollection of things he studied. We pray that <clears throat> he'll teach these things to us in a way that we can all study them ourselves, <coughs> understand them, we can 
bind our lives, be stronger Christians, and teach others thy word. I also pray at this time that you will always be with the church here at Malden, that each and everything we say and do here always will be according to thy will. Rachel, we thank you for your son Jesus as he came to this earth. He was willing to go to that, hang hung up on that cruel cross for each and every one of us. He shed his blood that we can, that uh, we can be washed our sins away with. I also pray at this time that you'll be with all of our shut-ins, be with the ones that take care of them, comfort them at this time. Be with all of our sick, that they may return back to our health, be thy will. Especially, pray that you'll be the ones who are numbered to be having upcoming surgeries. That you'll be with the doctors and nurses and the families that take care of them, that they may return back to our health. Also, pray at this time that you'll be the ones that we know that are on foreign soils. You know, uh, Brian Luttrell and Brown, Michael Brown's son. Be with them, keep them safe, and return them back to their families. And also be with each and every one of us there, that you, they may return back to their families, and be thy will. Pray that you'll be with all of our first responders, our, <coughs> our policemen, all the ones that protect us. Be with the doctors and nurses also. Pray that you'll keep them safe, and always return them back home to their families. Pray at this time that you'll be with us, that you'll always guard, guide, direct us, and that you'll forgive us for all our many sins. Christ, I only pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good evening. Thank you for that, Dale. I need that. Sometimes you have prayers, especially when you start off with a song that has an extra slide in it that was not supposed to be there. <laughs> That's what happened to us tonight. I wasn't expecting that. Three, four, one. Three, four, one. <clears throat> Is your life a channel of blessing? Is the love of God flowing through you? Are you telling the lost of the Savior? Are you reading his service to do? Make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of Blessing, I pray. My life possessing, my service blessing. Make me a channel of blessing today. Is your life a channel of blessing? Is <coughs> telling going for him? Have you spoken the word of salvation to those who are dying in sin? Make me a channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing, I pray. My life possessing, my service blessing. Make me a channel of blessing today. We cannot be channels of blessing if our lives are not free from all sin. We will barriers be and a hindrance to those we are trying channel of blessing today. Make me a channel of blessing.
thing I frame, my life possessing, my service blessing, make me a channel of blessing today. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, comforter, keeper, Spirit, we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost their way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost the way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. always hunger for, oh, our hearts always hunger for. Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. That is not the Our song before the lesson, three, one, two. Three, one, two. They tried my Lord and Master with no one to defend within the My 
friend I recommend because he brought salvation is why I am his friend I'll be a friend to Jesus my life for him I'll spend I'll be a friend to Jesus until my year shall encouragement is seven to two. Seven to two. Matthew chapter twenty six. Starting at verse fifty six. But all this had taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples left him and fled. And then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. <coughs> At a distance. It poses for us a serious danger just as it did for Peter. It's hard to believe that a man who had been with Jesus for very close to three years, one who identified Jesus in Matthew 16, 16 as the Christ, the Son of the living God, All those times, all those teachings, all the miracles that he had witnessed and had been a part of. And now, after the other apostles, disciples had fled, instead of standing next to Jesus, his friend, he kept his distance. Anyone who is concerned with eternity is concerned with the answer to the question, how can I know I am saved? In the last two Sunday mornings, we have answered that question. But in the case of our distances, people typically choose one of two sources feelings, and the Word of God. Have you ever been traveling before the age of a navigation system and the phones, and you're traveling on this road, you know where you're going, and you're driving along, and then you soon discover that you're heading in the wrong direction? You're for many years traveling up and down 95 to Maryland from Charleston and things like this. When I would get to D.C., I relied solely on landmarks. I think that the construction on D.C. that have had guys whose first day on the job also retired working on that road around D.C., if I was to go up that way and rely on landmarks, I'd just be circling D.C. like Indians circling a wagon train. I'd soon find myself in the wrong direction. Feelings are based on information that sometimes are not correct. In Acts chapter 22, Paul was standing before a multitude of people, he was talking here about his conversion. What a change for Paul, a man who finally got to the right direction. 
But at one time, Paul felt that Christianity was against the will of God. And Paul did his very best to get rid of it. But Paul was acting on feelings that was based on what had been taught to him. Now, something that we need to think about for just a moment. We do things today based on feelings that may seem right. But in actuality, they are wrong. When we use that term or when people come up and hold on to John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son. And whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. They hold on to that, as if that no matter what they do in their lives, they're saved. They feel that because God's love is so strong that he will not object to making changes making changes in his word, making changes on how we do things. There are a lot of things that the religious world does that sound great. Music is beautiful. They have talented musicians. They have groups of people who can sing and make the hymns ring. Everything is very harmonious. Or as I had one man say, melodious. Sounds great. And because of that and because it's so pleasing to us, we feel that it cannot but be pleasing to God. But all of these feelings that feel right, in reality, they're wrong. They end up causing us to offend God rather than worship Him. For instead of trying to please God, we're trying to please self. <coughs> Proverbs 14 and verse 12, Solomon said that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. <coughs> when it comes to salvation, the one thing we cannot trust is our feelings. We can't be saved by being morally good. We can't come to our services regularly and continue to resist God any other day of the week. Proverbs 28 and verse 26. Again, whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool. But he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. Our society today is very emotional. The littlest things seem to create a lot of emotion. Things that just a decade ago would be insignificant. And the same thing occurs within our own religious world. And Jeremiah, he was at the temple gates in Jeremiah chapter 10. And as he was speaking, he said, I know, Lord, that the way of man is not in himself, that it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. The only true God in our lives is God's word. And the key text is found in Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, where it says here that the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. The verse tells us that with the testimony of two witnesses, one can know that they are a child of God. 
These two witnesses are God's spirit and man's spirit. But we must notice also that it is not God's spirit testifying to our spirit, but rather God's spirit testifying along with our spirit, which means that we must both be going in the same direction. And what is that testimony or that witness of God's spirit? First, it's not one that's given to feelings or emotions. God is not trying to override our own mind. He's not trying to force us through direct influence. He's not trying to control our hearts. He's not talking or whispering in our ears. There's not a single person in the Bible that has ever claimed that they were a child of God by any of these things. So how did the Spirit's testimony come? It came by words. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 13, where Paul writes, As it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thought except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words which, not, which are not been taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. Friends, we have his written testimony. Those inspired men by the Holy Spirit put these things down for us. Jesus gave us what information was necessary to be reconciled to God. And then the Spirit aided these inspired men to guide us further along. In 2 Peter 1, in verses 20 and 21, Peter said, knowing this first of all, that no prophecy in Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of men, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And our steadfast and unshakable scriptures of 2 Timothy 3 and verses 16 and 17, all scripture is breathed out by God, profitable for reproof, correction, instruction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete for every good work. standing there at Pentecost we're watching Peter speaking in Hebrew we watch the other 11 speaking in other languages preaching that sermon that day all those people 3,000 souls convicted by the word, inspired word, that was preached. It was a fulfillment of what Jesus had spoken of in Matthew 10 and verse 20. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. And those words were recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 2. Fishermen. Tax collectors physician, mostly unlearned men, converting souls that day. We've learned about the Spirit's witness and testimony, but what about man? The Spirit of man bears witness as to what a person has done or has not done. 
in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. It tells us that we become a child of God, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding of the word of God. Friends, we are born again through the Spirit's words. The Spirit has told us exactly what is involved to become that child of God. He says that we become children of God through faith. When we are immersed in that water of baptism. Whereas Galatians 3 and verses 26 and 27 remind us for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. If those things have not been done and the millions of people around the world who call themselves Christians If they were listening to this and they said, well, I haven't done that, then that's the Spirit speaking to them that they have not become that child of God. When God's Spirit testifies through the inspired writings as to what we have to do to be saved, to maintain our salvation, to tell us how to live, then that is when God's Spirit and our Spirit bears witness to them. When we've done those things, then we can know and understand that we have met these conditions. The joint testimony of these two witnesses assures us of our salvation. But if our witness does not bear witness to God's witness, then we have to know that through God's word that we're not saved. The opportunities that we have every single day doesn't have to be on a Sunday. It can be any day of the week that some comes to the understanding that they know they have to be saved. We use this moment as an opportunity for those who desire to turn their life over and to obey the gospel. But it can be done any day of the week. We just prefer it be done as soon as possible because we never know what the morrow will bring. If you're not a child of God, we want to give you that opportunity. If you're not a child of God and you want to know more, we want to help you understand what the Bible reveals in God's plan of salvation. And if you are a child of God and you have not been as faithful as you think you should, that there's something in your life you need to reconcile with God. We want to give you that opportunity also. If any has a need, won't you come as together we stand and we sing. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around.
don't believe there's anyone who did not have the opportunity to go to the Lord's Supper this morning. Very good. Uh, please, if you can assist in the uh, personal works uh, right after services, it would be greatly appreciated. This time we'll be dismissed with prayer. Most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for all the many blessings that you have given us throughout our lives, especially our health and our strength. We're thankful for the opportunity that you've given us to come here tonight. Thankful for Joel for his ability to lead us in songs of praises unto thee. We're thankful for Dennis for the lesson that he has brought to us. We pray that we would take these things and apply them to our lives. I always strive to have a home in heaven with you. We pray that you would be with the ones that are shuddering, the ones that are sick, the ones that are traveling, that you would be with them and be with the ones that are looking over them. We pray that you would always watch over us, that you would guide, guard, and direct us, and that you would forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.